Ladies and gentlemen, as I say, it's a very, very special occasion. I'd like you to give a big round of applause, please, to the gentleman who is going to be talking about creativity and the audience. Please welcome Daniel Clee. Madam President, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Corinthians, and most welcome guests. Well, here we are. This is my final speech of this program. It's my number 10, and everything is expected. Well-constructed language, colorful metaphor, expression, voice projection. I can even boogie if I want. And of course, I can smile. But ladies and gentlemen, this speech is not about me, it's about you guys. Or, more precisely, it's about me, though that I have been in the audience. Because while we all come to Toastmasters to become better public speakers, it is so important to recognise that indeed each one of us grows by being a member of this audience. And the importance of this cannot be understated. Now since I've been a member of this club, I've been transported to Australia, Armenia, America, Canada, South America, Africa, Tibet, China, Japan, India, and Sri Lanka. Serendipity. I've been introduced to our members' fathers, mothers, daughters, sons, best friends, and first loves. I've gained an understanding of charity raising, ballooning, the Navy, city life, writing books, chasing the almighty dollar, and how to walk away from the rat race. I've been informed that I create my own world while being reminded of the hazards in the medical profession, the care professions, and public sector bureaucracy. Everyone who comes up here and stands right here is seeking to grow. They admit their faults as human beings, and the best thing of all is that they believe in themselves. If you want to know more about life, it is here at London Corinthians, and I have gained a great understanding of the world simply by being a member of the audience. But why is there any of this important? We could be dismissive and say that we just come to Toastmasters simply to overcome our fear of public speaking, to learn to wield command over the audience. But think about it. By being a better member of the audience is vital if we're to improve the world in which we live. Now last year in this country there was a general election. A coalition government came to power. But we've lost faith in politicians. And in the student tuition fees issue, where politicians are willing to discard their promises, election manifesto promises, they continue to let us down. But if you want to see improvements in this country, don't look to politicians, look to the media, those people who presume to inform our thinking. Celebrity culture reduces everything to the banal. Around the clock news feeds us a relentless diet of inequality, recession, and death. And as for reflections of of creativity in our culture. The last original form of music was dance music back in the early 1990s. The film industry constantly plays safe and either reboots comic book franchises, makes sequels, churns out melodramatic chick flicks, or pointlessly remakes old classics like The Omen and The Wicker Man with My Fair Lady and Arthur on the cards. And forget about television, that long ago ceased being original. So we must ask ourselves the question, not whether we've been sold this mediocrity, but whether we have bought into it. And of course, meanwhile, there are the so-called high arts. But the trouble with patrons today is, they lack courage. It's so easy, say, to rebuild a great library and to exercise the patronage of sitting on its board than it is to bring through today's young artists, those who are capable of redefining us as, as human beings as we face the challenges of the new age. Besides, today's kids are so neck high in debt, is it any wonder that creativity today seems rehashed and tired? 
So what is the purpose of creativity? Can anyone give me an answer? Anyone? Something different? Yeah. It's an outlet. Sorry? It's an outlet. Not bad. Anyone else? Very family. Yeah. George? Entertain and educate. Okay. I came across a definition recently. The purpose of creativity is to gain freedom. Beethoven created incredible music though he was deaf. Milton created vast new worlds in poetry, even though he was blind. And have you ever actually listened to Stevie Wonder's lyrics, wondering how a blind man can actually seem to see so much more in the world than we do? These were men of their times and even before their times. And the desire to reveal a hidden treasure is what impels the creativity of these people. And the result of the compound of their imagination, their memory, the will, the observation and persistence is not a book, or a film, or a painting, or a piece of music. It is a fully fledged human being. And we in the audience participate every time. What is more, the feedback loop between artist and audience, between speaker right now and audience, is that it raises everybody's expectations and the quality of work. Now, this is important because a society where creative experiences are regarded as amongst the highest goods is a society that's more creative, more open, and more free than societies in which these are feared and repressed. So, my call to action is this. Demand better and more hopeful writing from the newspapers that you read. Switch off the television if you're not being stretched mentally or being entertained. Question the people who set the news agenda. Don't go to the cinema if nothing original is on offer. But do go to music concerts and to art exhibitions if the musician and the painter can help you understand yourself just a little bit better. Because by being a better and more informed member of the audience, you will see better reflections of the world in which you live. That's how we participate, and that's how we help create a better world for ourselves. Thank you. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, that was a number 10. Fantastic.